Food Heals Podcast, Episode 65. But I would love to just, you know, have an app that you just put your thumb on and be like, you're vibrating a million dollars or you're vibrating a cup of coffee. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. Today, we're back with intuitive life strategist Alita McDaniel, back by popular demand, I should say. That's right. (laughs) Alita's experience includes over a decade of culinary arts, personal training, life coaching, holistic health coaching, study of comparative religions, and certifications in universal intelligence mentorship, 12-strand DNA healing, group consciousness, and the intuitive business coaching program, All-Knowing Entrepreneurship. Girls on fire. That's right. (laughs) It is always exciting to have Alita on. Alita has been working with quantum consciousness for over 10 years, teaching intuitive wellness, facilitating divine intelligence workshops, and crafting life mastery programs inspired by tapping into the fabric of the universe. But before we get to our interview with Alita, we have to tell you about today's sponsor. Food Heals Nation, are you looking for the perfect scheduling tool for your business? Um, yes. I didn't ask you, Allison. I asked Food Heals Nation. Oh, sorry. Anyway, are you (laughs) sick and tired of sending emails back and forth and wasting your precious time on scheduling your clients? Absolutely, I am. There you go again. If so, (laughs) we've got the solution for you. Yes, we do. If you own a massage business, a therapy practice, a yoga studio, and we know many of you do, or maybe you even host a podcast like us, Acuity is the only scheduling and time management tool you will ever need. Acuity allows you to schedule clients without sacrificing your soul. After all, you went into business to make yourself money, not to make yourself crazy. That's right. Acuity allows you to automate your client bookings, cancellations, reminders, and even payment with one click and zero frustration. Clients, or guests in our case, they can see your real-time calendar availability. They can self-select the time that works best for them and easily book and pay for their own appointments in advance, sparing you those stress headaches, mix-up, and those grunts of frustration. I don't know anything about that. I do. (laughs) I've heard you grunt. (laughs) I don't grunt. Do I grunt? It's very ladylike. They have four convenient packages for you to choose from. Yep, their prices range from zero per month, yes, they have a free version, to only $34 per month if you need all the bells and whistles. They have a free version? That's awesome. I know. Well, they have the $10 level for emerging entrepreneurs, a $19 a month level for growing your business, and a $34 a month level for larger businesses. That's so affordable for all you get. Get started today. Go to acuityscheduling.com slash foodheals to get a 45-day free trial. That's an amazing discount, Food Heals Nation. It's usually a 14-day trial, but we scored this discount exclusive for you. Acuityscheduling.com slash foodheals. Next up, our interview with Alita. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. Today we are here with Alita McDaniel, back by popular demand. Oh, yes. Alita works with people across the globe tapping into pure consciousness to shift the world one thought at a time. The first 20 years of her life, she suffered with chronic illnesses such as Epstein-Barr, fibromyalgia, bronchitis, sinusitis, chronic fatigue, depression, but was able to completely overcome them naturally. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. She's amazing. And then she does a lot today. So we're going to get into all that. Alita studied at the University of Santa Monica, which is how I met her. And during her first year studying spiritual psychology, she received an intense message that she was going to be a spiritual teacher. Now she's on a mission to help you make this the best life you've ever lived. I love that. We are so excited to have you back, Alita. Welcome. 
Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to all of your listeners who demanded that I come back. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, they did. We got a lot of questions about your episode, kind of follow-up questions. And we got just some emails saying like, oh, we love this episode, some tweets. So we definitely wanted to have you back to talk about some of the things because we talk a lot about food, but a lot of people are really, really into the law of attraction and manifestation and being our best selves and living our best lives. And since you've overcome so much, educated yourself and now are a spiritual teacher, We have so many questions for you. And so actually, these questions kind of um, stem from, some are from our listeners, some Susie and I came up with, and some you sent to us. I think this is going to be a really great podcast, just covering a lot of really interesting topics. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. Um, So for anyone who has not gotten a chance to listen to your previous episode, can you give a quick summary of your bio? I know that's hard, but just like the key points that are important to talk about. You know, uh, I think the key points uh, really for me is I was able to just overcome a lot of chronic illness um, yeah. that most doctors said was really impossible. Um, and for me, it it really stemmed from the mindset. Uh, I found that nutrition and supplementation was a, a massive help, but it wasn't until I changed my mindset and I, I changed my outlook and my perspective on life that I was able to actually fully resolve a lot of these issues. And the combination of that plus the nutrition and plus the supplementation has helped me to just eliminate those things from my body. Now in the work that I do, I'm able to help clients really clarify what their sole purpose is. Uh, and a lot of times people are still struggling with those limiting beliefs so much so that they can't really get a grasp on how to just be authentic. Mm -hmm. So I help them really to just cut through the baggage, you know, remove anything that's cluttering them from seeing what their true potential is and to break free from all the limitations and the dis-ease so that they can really just live in their true vibrational, you know, alignment. I love that so much. And I know that Susie and our assistant Lisa has had sessions with you and I know I'm due for mine. It yes. was amazing. <laughs> I loved my session with you, Alita. It was fantastic. And I need to do another one. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> Maybe we should do mine on air, but then all my shit will come up and Food Heals Nation will, wait, no, will know way too much information. About me. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit those parts out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. So I love your story and I just think that you're so inspirational and we don't have to flatter you all night, but just know that. Um, So let's talk about some of the questions that have come up from our listeners and that we have and that you sent us. So I want to just start with a with a straight up question from one of our listeners, because I want to make sure a lot of times we do questions at the end. Let's do a question right from the start. So this is from someone in our Food Heals Nation Facebook group, and she says, My boyfriend always says he's going to change, work out, eat healthier. She says, I'm a veg, he's a meat eater, and a junk food fanatic. But it never happens. So I guess she's saying it never. he never changes. He's always too busy to work out and says I'm too annoying about food. Oh, I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely don't know what that – I think I did that this morning to my husband. I do it all the time. He said stop nagging. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there we go. So you're not alone, girl, first of all. But uh, all right, let me finish the question. All I want is for him to be healthy. How can I support him without being a nag? Yes, we need to know the answer to this too. How can I create the space for him to change? Is there anything energetically I can do? Gracias. Wow, that's a really, really good question. And um, the first answer is you can't change somebody else. What? I know. I know. It's crazy. Come on. Okay. So, so here's, so here's the thing. All right. When we feel resistance from somebody else and we are struggling to feel the need to change them, that means there's something about ourselves that we have not accepted. Mm Mm-hmm. So our, our desire to change somebody else is a clue that we do not have unconditional acceptance for ourselves. And, and I know this, this can be really challenging for people to kind of grasp onto mainly because we see somebody and yeah, I I would see the same thing too. Like, Oh, I want them to be healthy and I want them to, to, to live a healthy lifestyle. But the problem is, is if somebody doesn't have the drive or determination to do it, nothing you do or say can motivate them to make those changes. Now, the way that you can work around that is to inspire them. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is many years ago, I was in a relationship and I was really struggling to, you know, change my partner at the time. So my mom, uh, I asked her, you know, for some advice and she basically said to me that you can't change your partner. 
But what you can do is you can change yourself, change your habits. And as you start moving without him, he's going to want to be with you. So he's going to make those changes to be with you. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, if he doesn't make those changes, you've got to come to the realization that he's doing what's best for him. Mm -hmm. In his mind, he doesn't understand the world the way you do. And so for this person, our listener here, who's, you know, struggling to, to want him to change, you have to come into a place of, of loving him unconditionally. There was a reason why you got in the relationship in the first place. You didn't get with him to change him. You got with him to love him. And if you can love him unconditionally and you can accept him as a spiritual being, having a human experience, and understand that on a soul level, he's choosing to have these experiences. Mm -hmm. He's choosing to participate in life and show up in life the way that he is. All you can do is shine your light brighter, be more authentic, be more loving, be more healthy, be more conscious, be more aware, be more present. And in doing so, the energy of your vibration raises up so high that he has no other choice but to climb. And like we talked about in our last podcast interview, you know, not every relationship works out in that way. And there there does come a time where some relationships where the partner just doesn't want to raise up and the relationship is going to end. So my my recommendation on this on something like this is rather than trying to change the other person before we go give advice or try to change somebody else, Matt Kahn, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Matt Kahn. He's a beautiful mystic. He says that if you want to give advice to somebody, give it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. Practice it first. Take it into your heart first and embody that wisdom first so that before you try to give advice to somebody else, you're living it. Yeah. And my recommendation for this listener would be to just look and at any way that you still feel you're not in commitment with yourself, any way that you're still feeling in the presence of judgment, look at ways that you can love yourself more and be more healthy and more vibrant so that your truth and your passion and your light shine so brightly that he has no other choice but to adapt. I think I think I personally really needed to hear that because mm -hmm. I I can't remember if it was yesterday or today, <laughs> but I did the same thing to my husband and yeah. he called me. He said I was nagging and he said not today, not that any day he accepts my nagging. Right. But I really, <laughs> Alita, thank you. I really needed to hear that because, and I know that I know that like if I want him to be healthier as he says he wants to be, just like our question um, from our listener that I need to do it first. I need to, like you said, shine my light and, and make the change myself. Mm -hmm. It's like the old quote, which is so cheesy, but so true. It's be the change you want to see in the world. And you can apply that to anyone you are trying to change. Be the mm -hmm. change you want them to see and th therefore they will change. Why is it so much exactly. easier when I think about that in a global sense versus right. in a re an intimate relationship. Right. Alita, why is it so much easier? <laughs> why, well, the re okay, so the reason why is because we typically, because we're, okay, we're in women bodies. We have the women emotions. We have the women experience. We tend to assume that women are the emotional creatures, but actually men are very emotional and they're very, they're triggered by our actions and our, our reactions to them. And we don't assume that they're feeling any sort of emotion because men are not used to expressing their emotions. Mm -hmm. So you know, in, in this situation, when we are in a relationship with a man, you know, if you're a woman, your relationship with a man, you know, we experience an opposition that's constantly challenging us to reframe our thoughts, reframe our reaction, reframe our responses. It forces us to constantly go back in and do the inner work. Mm -hmm. And so on a global scale, we don't have to look at them on a daily basis, you know, mm -hmm. but our, our partner and our spouse, we have to look at them on a daily basis. We're challenged by them 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you, you can't get away from the squeaky wheel. So that relationship is the one that makes it the most challenging because it's the one that flares up the ego. Mm -hmm. It's the one that challenges our limiting beliefs and our identity beliefs. It's the one that forces us to look deeply at ourselves in the mirror and look at why am I basically being a bitch today. Why, <laughs> why am I projecting my negativity or my fear onto him right now? Is he, is he really the culprit or am I just afraid of losing him in this moment? And it's very hard to do sometimes. Yeah, it is. So you have to have compassion for yourself in that moment too. Absolutely. 
that's, that's the, that's the objective mm-hmm. right there is self-compassion. And most of us never learned that. So it's something that we have to acquire along the way. And, and I truly believe that finding a healthy balance in a relationship where instead of reacting, you know, with our fear and with our doubt and with our emotions, we, we come into that place of compassion before we respond, Mm -hmm. you know, and we allow ourselves to be compassionate, not only for ourselves, but for our spouse and understand, okay, wait a second. Obviously we're seeing things two totally different ways. I need to have compassion for myself and know I'm making choices that are right for me. And I need to extend the same for him. And now from that place, now what's the response that I want to take? Mm -hmm. It's very different. Preach it, Alita. (laughs) (laughs) Right? It sounds like you're on stage, like preaching. Thank you for that answer. For sure. I think that you have to hear it and then you have to learn from experiencing it. And I can speak from my own experience where uh, when my father was sick, it was at the same time when I was all of a sudden opening my eyes to nutrition. And I was like, I can change him. I can make him eat this way. At the same time, I was opening my eyes to law of attraction, spirituality, all of these things. So I was like, I, using my law of attraction skills, can change him. Well, that's mm-hmm. obviously not true, but I had to learn it firsthand. <laughs> mm-hmm. So not only would I nag him and try to change him, but in a loving, compassionate way. You know, I didn't nag him the way Susie and I nag our husbands. Okay. But <laughs> no, it's different. I, I, yeah, I've it's, nagged my father about food too. Yeah, exactly. It's a different type of nagging, but it's definitely like, I want to change you and here's why you need to listen to me. Right. Mm-hmm. So at first I did that with my father and, um, I also did what I thought was the spiritual component where I would write about him. We were, now I know you can only write about yourself to make changes. Like, and when I say write, I just mean like write the things that I wanted to manifest. And so I would see him in perfect health and I would write about him in perfect health and I would write about him listening to me. And, you know, as much wonderful things as you want to do, you can't change a single person. Just like you said, when we started, you can't change someone. All you can do is create the space for them to choose what they're going to do. And I had to learn it from personal experience. And I went so hardcore on this, trying to change him to the point where he literally would pretend to be asleep and pretend he was sicker than he was. This is when he has cancer. Pretend he was sicker than he was so he wouldn't have to drink the latest green garlic concoction that I had made him, right? Mm -hmm. And he sat me down and he said, look, I know you believe in this, but I don't. And you have to let me die the way that I want to die. And the hardest thing I ever did was walk out of that room. And after that happened, he didn't sleep as much. All of a sudden, he's awake and walking around. (laughs) He had been faking illness. (laughs) To not wow. drink my green smoothies. I'm not kidding. And all of a sudden, he seemed a lot... I mean, he was dying of cancer. But all of a sudden, he had a lot more energy. When we had had the talk that, I'm not going to change, baby, and you can't mm-hmm. make me. And when I accepted that and let him live his life, we were able to have a stronger relationship for those last few months. And it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. It's heart-wrenching. No wonder I'm acting out the same thing with my husband. Drink your green smoothie. Eat the vegan food. Do what I tell you. Well, no wonder, right? Mm-hmm. I'm aware. Yeah. I'm aware, ladies. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm where where I should, not should, but where I would like to be and, and treating every moment with compassion the way that Alita just so beautifully stated, but I'm working on it and it's good to hear. It's good for us mm-hmm. to hear. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's really funny because, you know, in, in the process of, you know, seeing the things that we want to change in somebody else, it's almost like the resistance is created so that we can learn to just love unconditionally that much more. Mm. You know, my grandma is being treated by hospice now. She's 97. And when I go and visit her, you know, she doesn't want to eat. She barely wants to drink because that will require her to get up and go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she says to me, you know, things like, honey, well, any day now, you know, I'm just waiting any day now. And she's pretty much accepted it. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing I can do to, to put her in a happy place or, or to make this more comfortable to her. You know, she's kind of where she's at. So I go to visit her. I'm there for five minutes and she's like, okay, honey, time for you to go, (laughs) you know? And, and, and so, you know, this, it's, it's really that beautiful process that, 
you know, some people have this belief that life and health and death are supposed to be a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just as God, spirit, source, consciousness, universe loves us unconditionally, we are that energy embodied in a physical form. So the more we can allow that unconditional love to come through us and project out onto the others, the better chance we have of impacting the world for the better. And you know what? I know those people. They just radiate love at all times. And I'm like, chill out, sister. But really, (laughs) I'm jealous Mm. because I want to be in that loving space all the time. And I can be. I can absolutely Mm -hmm. be there. But it's more like 70-30, where 30% (laughs) of me is like, oh, woe is me. Today's been a hard day. And the other 70% that's in a good mood can be like, life is wonderful and abundant and I'm so happy and let me shine and radiate that happiness with everyone I meet. But it's not every day. So that's somewhere to strive to, to be. And mm-hmm. you know those people that are there all the time. They, yeah. Their eyes shine, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, here's a funny thing that I, I also learned from Matt Kahn is he said, you know, when we – go through the process of clearing limiting beliefs. So we're looking for the aspects of ourselves that are broken and we're looking for those limiting beliefs so that we can clear them. The universe says, oh, great. This person loves clearing limiting beliefs. Let me give them more so that they have more baggage to clear. And I'm like, and as soon as he said that, I was like, are you freaking joking? Here I've been causing myself more damage and more harm because I'm thinking I'm doing myself good. And all I needed to do was declare myself healed and whole and happy. Mm -hmm. the way Jesus did for everybody in the Bible and every spiritual teaching tells us to. And all of a sudden you say, I, I could just declare myself healed and I can be happy all the time. Great. I'll take that. And as soon as I did that, things stopped bugging me as much. Mm -hmm. Things stopped triggering me as much. And all of a sudden I started looking around going, oh, okay. Well, that person's choosing what they're choosing. I'm just going to love them. Okay. Well, that person, well, they're doing what they're doing and they cut me off. Okay. Love you. Bye. (laughs) And you know, and it was, it was really strange because I'm like, oh no, I'm turning into one of those crazy people, but you know, it actually feels so much better, Mm -hmm. so much better. But all we have to do is literally declare ourselves as healed and act from that space. And it changes everything. Declare yourself healed. I love that. (laughs) That's a great quote. Mm. All right, let's move on to another question. So the three of us here are all entrepreneurs. We have our own businesses. So I feel like this is a perfect trio to answer this question. And this was um, posted in our group as well. And I had a conversation with her, so I won't read the whole conversation. But let me just hit the bullet points of the question. So it starts out with, I have a question about launching a business. I feel a little blocked by fear, I think. I want to get started. I have looked up steps to follow and legalities, but I feel paralyzed. Would you say this is normal and do you have any advice? So we continue to have a conversation where I said she may be having imposter syndrome, which means I'm not good enough. I, who am I to run a business? And yes, it was completely normal. And she said that is how she feels. And so her business that she wants to start is she was a personal trainer. She has been for years and she stays home with her children, but she got a calling that she wants to, that she wanted to get her health coach certification. And so she feels confused and she has fear and she has fear about charging people and worthiness. And she knows there's value in what she can do. um, But there's a fear around that, which I completely understand. So let's talk about this as an entrepreneur spiritually, how can you get to that place of getting rid of that imposter syndrome, getting rid of those doubts? What is some self-talk? What are some methods to kind of get over that? God, I love this question. Oh my gosh. You don't even understand. So let me tell you right now at this point in my life, uh, I have joined on with a bunch of different entrepreneur groups, Mm -hmm. mainly because one of the things that I found in the last few years was that there's this massive gap between spirituality and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's like the two are not allowed to coexist Mm -hmm. somewhere. Somebody developed this idea that money is the root of all evil, which is I call bullshit. Okay. Okay. And money is an energy. Now, when we get our call to do this spiritual work, our only experience with successful, what we deem as successful spiritual, you know, people, um, is that they're, you know, they're gurus, they live on a mountaintop, they're in seclusion and they meditate all day long. There's no money involved. (laughs) Right. Right. And the modern media plays up the entrepreneurship as only the evil, greedy, 
you know, politically based, uh, you know, corporate America that has absolutely no ethical values whatsoever. But the problem is there's a massive, massive field of entrepreneurs out there who actually have integrity Mm -hmm. and who are building from, from a place of let's grow because it's in the highest good of us all. So Bob Proctor, one of the things that he said, he, he created a course based on the book, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. Yes, which is a great read for anyone who wants to combine um, spirituality and money and really read about what misbeliefs you can get rid of around that. But go on. Absolutely. And it's a super short book. I actually literally am looking at it right now. Um, And one of the things that, you know, Bob Proctor says is when we have more money, we're able to reach more people. Mm -hmm. So for us to deny ourselves the possibility of charging for something that spirit has called us to do is literally saying, okay, you know what? I know that you're calling me to do this, but I want to play small. I don't want to take any risks. I want to do it safely because really, I don't think that people are going to take me seriously. Mm-hmm. And I, I struggled with that when I first got my call too, because I was just like, how, how am I going to do this? So, you know, the first thing that I would recommend is sharing information. You know, there are, you know, lots of books on internet marketing, on business and entrepreneurship. But the fact of the matter is, is you have to start yourself. You have to start opening yourself up as a vessel. And this is what I love about social media between YouTube, Periscope, Instagram, you know, Snapchat, Facebook, you have all these different areas that you can share information. And all you have to do is literally just pour your heart out. When you start pouring your heart out, you're going to start getting people who are going to start asking questions. Wait a second. You have a lot of information. Can I talk with you? Can I pick your brain? Can I ask you some few, you know, a few questions? And the the business details are what cause analysis paralysis in the very beginning. It doesn't matter you you know starting the business and getting the licensing and getting, you know, your corporate paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about that. What you have to worry about first is becoming the vessel of light. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, she, she was a personal trainer. I used to be a personal trainer too, before I became a life coach and perfect. (laughs) Yes. Right. And what, and as a personal trainer, you are a life coach. You are a holistic life coach. Absolutely. All certifications aside, you are a holistic life coach. Right. So, you know, you can literally take your personal training clients or you could take some of those clients and say, Hey, I'm looking at transitioning into holistic life coaching. You know, you've already worked with me. Let me do a couple, you know, discovery sessions and see, you know, what it is that you're currently struggling with the the information I already know, because I've already worked with you before. Let's go a little bit more in depth outside of the gym Mm -hmm. and let's start working on your relationships, on your food, on your overall health, on your mindset. Right. And, and it allows, it allows you to work with the clients that you're already comfortable with so that you kind of get your feet wet into it and decide, is this the right route? Do I do, do I want to continue with this type of certification or is there another certification that would suit me better? Because there's a million and one out there now, and you don't necessarily need one to be a good coach. You just need to be a good listener. Yeah. And so entrepreneurship and and starting your own business, especially in the coaching realm, literally is tapping into and harnessing the infinite intelligence that already exists within each and every one of us and having the courage to just unplug the flow, start sharing it on, you know, YouTube and a blog and and social media. Like I read a book called the 10 X rule. I've listened to it like five times, right. On audiobook. And yes, he's amazing. And one of the things that he said was he started doing two posts per hour, every hour, 24 hours, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And I literally now wake up at three o'clock in the morning. I spend 40 minutes creating my spreadsheet, loaded up into a CSV file with all of my links, all of my times. I post it up into Hootsuite and all day I have five social media accounts that are being blasted two posts per hour. Mm -hmm. And it allows me from the very beginning of my day to unplug that flow. Once I unplug the flow, I'm in it all day long. 
but until I unplug it, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. So it really, it's literally understanding. It's not about being worthy. There's a, a beautiful quote, you know, that said, you know, God does not call the worthy or the basically the prepared. God prepares those who have been called. So once you get the call, then the preparation starts. So you may not feel worthy right now, but your future self is going to feel worthy yeah. because your future self is going to, is going to have all those tools. So you literally have to just start sharing, start pouring out your heart. And from there, the business will follow. The business will literally just take shape because you're walking with faith in the direction that spirit is leading you. That is so true. And I can even speak from a recent experience when Susie and I started this whole podcast, and I definitely suffered from like, you know, imposter syndrome and are people going to listen? Are we good enough? Are we smart enough? All that BS and are we ready and are we prepared and we don't have enough degrees and all that stuff, right? It's just junk. It's just worry. You don't need it. But right. once we started, got a little experience, got people listening and started receiving feedback, that is when it really clicked like we are doing a service and, you know, our podcast is free, but it's okay to charge sponsors, you know, and yeah. and monetize this because we are providing a service to the world and we have so much gratitude for that. That's what we want to do. And if we don't monetize it, we're going to be doing this for free for the rest of our life and we're going to have to stop because mom's got to pay the rent, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, and we, Susie and I do tons of other things. It's no big deal. But my point is, is that there is something about the feeling of unworthiness that will go away once you get a little feedback. And that feedback can come from the universe. It can come in email form. Someone writes you a nice email. It can come in person to person form. It can come from your own gratification of going, I did it and I didn't fail. I know that this is right. And being in that energy and going forward with a knowing like, oh, all that stuff is gone that I was holding on to. Am I good enough? And will I make it? Is this too risky? All the stuff, all the junk we ask ourselves, it'll disappear and it'll disappear quickly. I agree with everything you guys have said. Um, my own personal experience, I've started, I'm, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart ever since middle school. <laughs> I remember I went uh, traveling with my family. This was in the 80s. And this, there was this girl that was doing like these hand painted nail designs. And I was like, I could do that. I watched her do it. She did it on me. And I was like, I could do that for my friends. And I, I went home, learned how to do it and was charging my friends in the schoolyard five bucks a nail. I've always... <laughs> I've always been an entrepreneur and there's been times in my life where I fight that or the fear overtakes me. But just like Allison, just like Alita, I'm an entrepreneur. I've had, I've started many different types of businesses, some more successful than others. And as our listener wrote in my, my response when she, when she wrote, when she said, you know, is this normal to have this fear and this doubt? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You're human. If you start anything new, if you're changing your circumstance, if you're taking a risk, you're going to have doubts. My husband always says, doubt the doubts. So if your heart is telling you this is the direction I want to move in and you, and you have some fear come up, totally normal. You're totally human. And there's a great book that I read that someone recommended to me called Your Heart's Desire by Sonia Choquette, um, which I read a long time ago, Instructions for Creating the Life You Really Want. That might help. Mm. Um, it's just about tapping into your heart and what, what it's saying to you and, and letting the fear be there and still going for it anyway. I love that. I love That's that. Awesome. You know, I, I want to add one other thing also to that because, you know, as we're talking about this, the, the one word that keeps coming up for me is perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And I find that that fear of being worthy is usually in the form of comparison. I know that we've all experienced this where we see somebody who's already achieved a level of success we want to compare ourselves to them and say, well, I'm not as good as they are. When we spiritually talk about this idea that the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know, mm -hmm. you may not have reached a level of mastery that you deem as worthy, but to somebody else who has not reached your level of success, you are that master. And so while you may feel that when you compare yourself to somebody who has reached that infinite level of success, it seems so far off, it gives you space to grow into with the understanding you're never going to get it right. It's never going to be perfect. You're never going to fully master it. 
you're just going to keep growing. Mm -hmm. And if you can allow yourself, like Susie was saying, to be with the fear, to be with the growth, to not focus so much on perfectionism, but focus on progress. Yeah. And that is going to give you the space to grow and feel confident and feel safe to know that, you know, there is going to be somebody, if not many people out there who are going to resonate with exactly what you have to say. And they're going to resonate with something that you have to say more than somebody else. Mm -hmm. And there is no such thing as competition. All you're doing in business is you're creating relationships. And Rich Litvin says that he's a, he's a life coach as well. He says that we're not going out and finding clients, we're creating relationships. And I think it's also important to note that if you look at someone else, what they're doing, you go, oh, well, I can't do that because they're already doing it. They're not you. You bring a completely different, unique perspective to whatever it is. You have your different life experiences. You're a different human being. And therefore, whatever you create is going to resonate with somebody. And so don't, don't let that hold you back. Like someone else is doing it or there's not a need for it. There's a need. Fill that need. Yeah. Just like Allison said, when, you know, regarding this very podcast, when we first got together, I was kind of timid. I'm like, well, who am I? You know, I don't have degrees or certifications that, that I think would be, you know, I need more. You know, I have a bachelor's in psychology. I'm like, that's not enough. I need a master's. I need a PhD. I need, I need some kind of credentials. And then, you know, just opening the space and jumping in. And talking, mm -hmm. I realized I know a lot more than I thought I did or that I that I gave myself credit for. I've known about nutrition and healing and and, you know, energetics and all that. And, and it's true. Just like Alita said, you can't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. I mean, you bring mm -hmm. so much wealth of information that I have no idea about just from your ex life experiences of growing up, from your um, background in ma massage and acupuncture. Like you bring up all these topics that I don't know anything about. And so it's like a perfect balance, like because I talk about this vegan diet, you talk about alternative medicine, and it's a great you know, the fact that I don't know everything, you don't know everything, but together, plus our guests are always the best experts. Then in we the all world. know everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we got it covered. We covered, we got it all covered. Okay. No, it's, and I, isn't it, it's, it's so fun because, you know, as, as you, as you become an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is really about growth and expansion. And what you find is that even, even as you're working with a client, for me, I find clients who challenge me. Mm -hmm. So as I'm working with them, they may have a challenge that I've not faced yet, but in working with them and helping them to find their own answers, I grow and I expand. Sure. So it forces me and it challenges me to be even more humble in the process of just learning and growing and constantly, you know, not always having the answers, mm -hmm. but it's, but it's okay. And being okay with that and, and seeing it as an adventure, and being excited about the adventure rather than having to be the know-it-all all the time, which is a lot more pressure. Yeah, that's true. It's really exciting to learn and to share your knowledge, but also to learn as you go. That's I, that's all we're doing here in life, mm. right? Yeah. And um, I think I just want to mention one other thing that really helped me with all my entrepreneurial endeavors is two things. One, like Alita, you started to mention earlier, which is joining a community or a group that can support you. So you can see other people that are having similar struggles. You can see people that are ahead of you, people that are behind you, and just make connections with people. And you can help each other in each other's business. Ask a question, post an answer. You know, there's so many Facebook groups I'm a member of. It's disgusting, but it's helpful. Okay. <laughs> like I'm in a bunch like screw the nine to five, heart centered business, podcasters paradise. Like I could go on and on. And they help me because I read about other people, struggles, their wins, their advice. I can post questions. It's amazing. The second thing is books. I love to read books and I have so many on the bookshelf. Alina, I know you do too, but <laughs> like the first one I ever read, which is a little dated now, but still has a great, really spiritual message is the four hour work week. You know, we mm. all want to work four hours a week. Um, and it's really about sales, but the ultimate message is you can do anything you want and here's how. You don't have to be a slave to the man if you don't want to. And I think that's so important. And some people love their nine to five and they love that job security. And so that's wonderful. Stay where you are. I'm talking to the people that are ready to take that risk. What are some of your favorite books or, you know, resources for people in the world of entrepreneurship, spirituality? What do you think? Wow. Um, 
you know, there, there's a, uh, yes, I have a lot of books. Um, you know what, there's, there's a few of them that I really like as far as entrepreneurship goes. The first one is called The Personal MBA. What I like about this book is it basically distills all the information that you would get in a normal business program, but it comes at it from a real world practical experience. And, you know, I, I have it on audible and I have it in book form and I can flip back to just one tiny little section, yep. review the section and put it away. So I, I really like that book. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Another book that I recommend also is the 10 X rule. Yeah. Um, yeah, huge. Um, mainly because Grant Cardone is straightforward to the point yep. and he talks about just real world information. Uh, another one that I like as far as spirituality is concerned is, is just like we talked about the science of being rich or getting rich and also um, the science of being great. It's also by Wallace D. Waddles. Uh, the two of those books are brilliantly written. And as far as coaching is concerned and working with clients, the Zen of listening. Mm. That's yeah. a good one for this for the person that wrote this question. Yeah. I wanted to jump back. I have to get those, by the way. I've never heard of The Science of Being Rich or The Science of Being Great. And it's, I love his name. They were written. <laughs> when were they written, Alita? So long what, like ago. like the turn of the Good century? Good God. Yeah, uh, like yeah many years ago. I yeah, easily the 20s. Yeah. Anyways, definitely check those out. And it's interesting because you think, well, why would I read a business book written in the 1920s when everything has changed? Well, it's not about that. It's about like the spirituality of money. And, you know, it's it'll it'll starve those doubts, like doubt the doubts, like Susie said. It'll help you do that. Mm -hmm. I wanted, Absolutely. I wanted to jump back mm -hmm. to Allison brought up uh, the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. That's a podcast actually that I listen to yes. because he's got great business advice and he has really interesting guests. Yeah. So and now that podcast is super current where the book's a little bit dated, but still check mm -hmm. out the book. Definitely check out the podcast. Well, just relating, mm -hmm. going back to, you know, it, it, this, this question from our listener really struck a chord with me because I, I so, I so get it. Like I've felt so much fear about starting different business projects. Um, and when he, I listened to an episode where he talked about writing that book mm -hmm. and he submitted it, it became a New York times bestseller. It was on the bestsellers list for, I don't know how a long time. Mm -hmm. Then he wrote another one, but same thing, but he went to 27 different publishers that turned it down. Wow. This was the last meeting that he had and they published his book strictly on the fact that at the end of the meeting, um, you know, they looked at him and they said, is there anything else you want to say? And he just said, I will do whatever it takes to make this a bestseller. Wow. And that is why they published him. They weren't going to do it. Because of they, his confidence. His confidence mm -hmm. and the fact that he was he was being honest and, he's, and he was tenacious mm -hmm. and he didn't have, he wasn't given any money for marketing. He went on the road. He went to South by Southwest. He gave talks. He just, he, pub, he, he really just, he did the work and he yeah. put himself out mm -hmm. there despite the fact that he had fears. He talked about it. He yeah. talked about it, about how he's like, what if I fail at this? I, you know, but he did it and it and it worked. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. He's a very good inspirational story. So if Food Heals Nation, you want to write a book, you're on the fence. Not only can you do what he did, but you don't have to go to a traditional publisher anymore. You can self-publish. You can put that book on Amazon. You can pay for your own tour. You can go to the bookstores. You can make your own talks. You can make YouTube videos. You can make Periscope videos. Like You can be your own PR these days. It's Don't they say, isn't there a statistic that it's not about how talented you are, but how tenacious, something like that? Like I mean, about it's true. About success? Everyone has a talent. Are you tenacious or are you sitting on the couch waiting for the world to take care of you? Or if, you gotta you know, do it yourself. Or if you get a rejection, if you're gonna listen to it, you're gonna say, no, I'm just gonna keep going. Well, that's why so many people like in the film or the acting business not fail, but they don't continue because they get too many failures or get too many no's, doors slammed in their faces and then they don't continue because they think I'm not good enough when the truth is like, you have have to be your own PR person and you have to show the world that you are that good. Maybe it's making YouTube videos. You know, I don't have the answer for every person, but tenacity, you know, it's like you can't go wrong if you don't. I mean, this was said to me when I was trying to be an extra on like some something in North Carolina Dawson's back in the Creek. day. No, it was before Dawson's Creek. So I got that because I was in film school. Before Dawson's Creek, I was in Wilmington. There's all these shows. I show up to the studios. I'm like, here's my headshot. I want to be an extra. And the guy looked at me and he was like, thank you very much, Allison. He's like, lovely headshot. He's like, I'm going to give you one word of advice before you walk out that door. And I'm like, okay. I'm like maybe 18 or something. He's like, tenacity, never lose it. I had to go look up what the word tenacity meant. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. 
And like, uh, now I know. And I didn't. Now you know. Yeah. And I don't want to be an actress, so I don't pursue it. But like that stuck with me because I want to do a lot of things and it's tenacity. You can't give up no matter what they say. And, you know, it's okay. I do want to say it's okay to give up if you realize that what you're doing doesn't resonate with you. So if you realize the universe is saying, you know what? This isn't for you. We've got something else in store. Then it's okay to shift. It's not giving up. It's not being defeated. It's shifting to what is truly in alignment with what you were born to do. And we are all born to do something. Some of us are born to do many things. And you got to figure out what that is. And it may take time. It takes trial and error. So all your failures are not failures. They are lessons learned to catapult you to the next exciting, amazing level, right? Amen. <laughs> now I'm preaching. <laughs> yes. Preach it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I get really passionate about this shit. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to some more questions. Okay. I think this came from um, one of your fans, Alita. What do the terms frequency, unfoldment, and calibration mean in relation to manifesting? When we talk about manifesting, a lot of times we don't realize that everything is energy. That being said, everything is vibrating a very specific frequency. So our thoughts and our habits and our choices have a vibration to them. So these are frequencies that we are experiencing in physical form. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, as we talk about, you know, entrepreneurship or we talk about, you know, bettering our relationships or better health, we have to calibrate our frequency to match or meet the desired reality that we're looking to create. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of books on the topic, but you know, there's a book called frequency by Penny Pierce. That's a brilliantly written book, but then on the flip side, a more practical version would be the book relentless by Tim S Grover. And when we talk about calibration in our manifesting, we're literally talking about excellence in action. So if I know that, for instance, I want to, you know, make say a million dollars since we're, you know, talking about this entrepreneur thing, I want to make a million dollars between now and next year. Mm -hmm. What I need to do is I need to understand that I am a frequency. And so it would be like if I was a symphony orchestra and I have all these players and I have all these different pieces of, you know, music, everybody's reading their sheet music and everybody's got their instruments, but they're playing a very melancholy kind of, you know, kind of humdrum kind of a song. But, but the song that's playing with that million dollars is rich and it's bold and it's vibrant. Mm. So I have to be able to pinpoint and and, and find different aspects of my music that's not participating in excellence, that's not practicing excellence. And I need to either remove the players, remove the instruments, or switch up the music so that I can calibrate my orchestra to match the music that's being played. And when most of us start to shift our lives and we start to say, okay, I want to make these changes. I want to reach this goal. We have a resistance on the inside to change. We're afraid of uncertainty. We're afraid when we get there, we're not going to like it or it's going to be too hard. So we've got this resistance. So we're pushing against. So the calibration doesn't happen. So what we want to do is we want to shift the frequency so that we be, we can become the magnet to that reality in vibration. And that happens in thought and habit and choice. Does that make sense? Again, mind <laughs> blown. <laughs> Alita, if you could invent a device that could measure calibration and like what you're vibrating, I think you'd be a gazillionaire. I mean, I know, I know we're supposed to read it ourselves and feel it's through feeling. I know that. But I would love to just, you know, have an app that you just put your thumb on and be like, you're vibrating a million dollars or you're vibrating a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, what's really crazy about that is David Hawkins actually developed a physiological test where it, it's literally physical feedback where you can test the energetic calibration of a particular quality or a particular thought. Wow. And it literally, he highlights this in the book, Power Versus, uh, Power versus, Power versus Force. Force. Yes, I read that book. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if at some point any of the listeners are, are looking and wanting to really understand how to calibrate their life, you know, if, if, you know, if you don't want to sit with your feelings and you don't want to be in the, that touchy feely emotion, you know, and, and really sit down and go through all your limiting beliefs or something. I mean, that's, that's a pretty quick, quick strategy to get straight to the point. If, if that's what you're looking for, <laughs> I guess, I guess muscle testing does the same thing, right? That's essentially what it is. Okay. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And Susie, tell us about muscle testing because muscle testing is one of the things that changed our, changed my life. Muscle testing, I learned in massage school. I went to this very progressive school called Ipsby in Culver City, California, and they were phenomenal. And their whole basis of their program was based on energy, that we're all energy. They taught us Tai Chi, and then they based their massage – like they taught us a massage practice or body mechanics using energy as opposed so to just cool. our thumbs and our elbows and our muscles. Wow. And yeah, it was fantastic. And um, Tai Chi is wonderful. It's a great – meditative tool and just a way to connect with your body. And, um, but muscle testing is basically your, your, uh, a way for you to gauge how anything is affecting you, whether it be food, thought, mm -hmm. other people, clothing, what have you, it can be, um, it's a little hard to describe, uh, you know, like this on the podcast, but you can do it on yourself or you can do it on other people. And basically it's very similar to that game that at least young girls always play at sleepovers with uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Oh yeah. Now, if you've mm -hmm. ever played that game, you know, I've played it and where it didn't work and I played it where it did work and we raised a, a girl off the floor with just everybody using two fingers. I have two. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, using thought to create the reality and and then seeing the results. So what we would do in massage school to prove this, that the way that the teachers prove this to, our, uh, to all the students is we would pair up and we would try to lift each other. And everybody could pretty much lift each other just at least off the ground. And then they would say, okay, now the person being lifted, I want you to say, I am heavy like a, a boulder. And we could not pick that person up. Then we would have the person say, I'm light as a feather. And whoops, there they went, like just straight up. Now, how do you explain, you know, you, you always have these very practical, scientific minded, like their weight did not change. Their physical weight did not change. We could generally pick them up off the floor. But then when they said they were heavy, we couldn't. When they said they were light, they felt lighter and it changed the reality and so muscle testing is sort of related to that where it's also used in applied kinesiology where yes. practitioners use that to, you know, kind of judge what's going on in your body uh, on our, all sorts of levels, be it physical, be it uh, emotional, be it bacterial or, or allergies and what have you, where you put out an arm mm -hmm. and just depending on what – say you're going to test a um, – you can test, you know, you can test food. You can test yeah. an organic apple versus a toxic chemical laden apple. And this is what I did. Yeah. yeah. And so you're, if you have someone doing it, doing it with you, you, you test first just the general resistance. And usually you can resist someone's arm. Um, so to describe this, you stick out your arm and the practitioner pushes down on your arm to see how you where your strength is. Right. This is your control. Yeah. basically right yeah. and you can use and i've always had it where people can resist someone or let's say what you're testing a thought is actually really easy and then you have the person say i am weak their arm goes straight down yeah and then you have the person say i am strong and their arm stays strong like wood yeah it's amazing and so then you can use that by holding a food or holding a thought and see what your muscles tell you so you can literally i was holding a carton of milk and my muscles were atrophy. They were like, we don't like this. And I was like, milk does my body good. What are you talking about? She's like, your muscles are speaking for you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It took me a long time to believe in this, you know, because mm. the first time I was still young and dumb. But uh, later I had it tested again after I look back and go, oh, my God, maybe that was true. And then I had to test it again. No dairy for you, sweetheart. You're done. Like, And that was years ago. And now I know, obviously, that dairy is not for me. But muscle testing is amazing. I don't know how we got off on that tangent, but 
look into it, Food Heals Nation. It's so interesting. <laughs> it really is amazing. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that too, because I, I know now that, you know, after years of being completely detoxed from junk food, if I'm walking down the aisles at a grocery store that I wouldn't normally shop at, if I just happen to glance over you know, intently to look at at what I'm seeing on the aisles, my eyes start to jiggle back and forth. Like you should not be looking here. Just keep walking. Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I understand that and I feel it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are really in tune with that and can do it to themselves. I'm not there yet, but I haven't really tried. No, you can. So what you do is basically, so it's, it's more, if you don't have someone, if you, you know, um, can actually do it with just thought or just looking at it, like Alita said, but you you basically make like an okay sign with one hand. And then, you know, if you try to break it, you can, you you know, you can normally break it. And then you, you know, you look at it, look at or think about whatever you're you're wanting to test. And if your hand goes stronger, actually, I'm sorry, reverse, you can usually resist your own finger. So you put, so you make the okay sign, you take it, your thumb and your pointer and put it through the hole of the other one and then try to break it. And you can normally break it, you know. No, no, like this. You push up to try to oh, break okay. the, the, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we're trying this live right now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm teaching on, on, yeah, I'm teaching Allison. I feel and like then, every time I try to do it to myself, I'm just tricking myself. I'm like, well, I want that food, so I'm going to say it's good for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I totally do. And it is more um, obvious when you have someone else do it for you. But yeah. like, if you're really honest with yourself and really, like, really try to resist, I mean, and I have strong hands, I'm a massage therapist, but if you really try to resist, you know, You know, you just got to be honest with yourself. And it takes practice. It's so interesting. I love it. Good stuff. I know. All right. We'll be right back with Alita's tips on manifesting your best life. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. And you're listening to the Food Heals podcast, where you'll find the tools to become a hotter, healthier, happier you. We'll be right back with Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Food Heals Nation, are you looking for the perfect scheduling tool for your business? Are you sick and tired of sending emails back and forth and wasting your precious time on scheduling your clients? If so, we've got the solution for you. That's right. If you own a massage business, a therapy practice, a yoga studio, and we know many of you do, or even host a podcast like us, Acuity is the only scheduling and time management tool you will ever need. Take it from us. Acuity allows you to schedule clients without sacrificing your soul. And automate your client bookings, cancellations, reminders, and even payment with one click and zero frustration. You're here to make yourself money, not make yourself crazy. Clients can see your real-time calendar availability, self-select the time that works best for them, and easily book and pay for their own appointments in advance, sparing you those stress headaches, mix-ups, and grunts of frustration. Before we had Acuity, we were spending a ton of time and energy with back and forth emails, trying to book guests, and sending them questions, and having to constantly follow up and send reminders. But Acuity changed everything. Yep, Acuity has completely automated our process and freed up our time to focus on the things we love to do, like providing our Food Heals Nation with high-quality content. Yes, so now instead of a mess of emails, we send our guests a booking link. They choose a time that works for them. They fill out our information form, which includes links to their website, their bio, their photo, and all the information we need, all in one place. Then the booking syncs automatically with our calendars and poof, we're done. Such a time saver. Such a lifesaver. And Acuity does so much more. Yes, you can automatically send branded and customized confirmations, reminders, and follow-ups via email or text message, and even accept payments and tips through Stripe, PayPal, Braintree, and Authorize.net with the click of a button. Get started today. Go to acuityscheduling.com slash foodheals to get a 45-day trial. That's an amazing deal, Food Heals Nation. It's usually 14 days, but we scored an exclusive discount for you, acuityscheduling.com slash foodheals. We love it, and we know you will too. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with Alita McDaniel, back by popular demand, and we're talking about all kinds of exciting things. And we have a last question that we really want to get to, because I think it's really important, because Um, It really represents a way that I used to think that I don't think anymore. So I love this question and it is, can we really create anything we want when there's only so much space in the world? Talk about that, Alita. Yes. One of my favorite (laughs) questions. So here's the cool part. 
what we see now is not what we had access to tens of thousands of years ago. What is happening is the universe is expanding. Uh, you'll you'll hear when you when you read books by Wallace D. Waddles, you're going to understand that for for many years now we have understood that the universe is constantly expanding. So as we call forward new realities, as we demand that we grow, as we what he calls the formless substance, as we intend that the formless substance create what we are calling forward, the universe has to expand to make space for us. So we have this belief that things are scarce. We can experience the world with only five senses. You know, these physical things make us think that there is only so much success or only so much love or that things are limited, that things are scarce. But in actuality, every time we intend or create something new, more quote unquote space is created for us to experience it. And so it's like this automatic adjustment and recalibration. So as, as any of you who have, who have studied any of the differences between the 3D and the 4D, and now we're going into 5D, we've gone from a three-dimensional concrete life into four dimensions, understanding that we can go back and forward on a timeline. Now we're moving into five dimensions, which gives us the access to infinite potential. And as we have moved from these different dimensions and we're jumping into the fifth dimension, there are studies and, and, and sciences that have shown that our world is literally expanding at the atomic level. So you can actually see that in quantum mechanics and quantum physics, they're actually proving this science to be true, that on a daily basis, on a minute to minute, second to second, everything is expanding to make space for everything that we are creating. So there is no end. There is no beginning. Everything is just constantly expanding. Every time you talk, I'm like, this is exactly what I need to hear. So awesome. Thank you for that answer. <laughs> and I remember a book always recommended by our grad school teachers. Tell me if you ever read it because I didn't. It wasn't in our curriculum, but they always talked about it. And it seems to revolve around what you're speaking to, which was it was called How Quantum Physics Proves the Existence of the Soul. <laughs> Have not read it, but definitely something that's on my on my radar. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about, but I, mm -hmm. I believe the premise is I mean, there's a lot more to it, so I'm not gonna misspeak I'm not gonna say what it's about because I don't know enough about it, but my impression of it is just what you said, like the quantum like this is being proven. This is not woohoo BS. Mm -hmm. This quantum physics is proving that the law of attraction is a law just like gravity, right? That mm -hmm. we are this abundance of energy and our energy can do anything. It's not limited by our stupid beliefs and our emotions and our held back energy that we're imposing upon ourselves because of our life circumstances or what have you. It's limitless. And so I want to live in limitless. I don't want to live in limited and lack, right? Exactly. When you think about the, the, the notion of an atom or a molecule, a particle, a particle, you know, we, we were taught in, in standard traditional science that matter is matter and that there's nothing beyond that matter. But when they go down and they break it down to the most fundamental level, they notice that, you know, the nucleus is in the center and the amount of space that's between the nucleus and, you know, the revolving rings around it, there's so much space that we are in the illusion that everything is physical matter around us, but there's actually more space in this physical world than we are able to see with our human eyes. Mm -hmm. And when we take that down even further, we go into the Planck scale, right? In, in quantum physics, it, there, there is literally no matter at all. It is literally waves of potential energy. That is where everything begins. And it's through our thoughts that call forward the physical manifestation of this formless substance to come into our physical reality that shifts what we experience in this physical form. I mean, again, speechless. <laughs> 
<laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pl- plank, th- what'd you say? Plank form? <laughs> plank form. <laughs> okay, let's bring it down to a level one here, people. Let's talk about some tips, Alita's quick and dirty tips to manifesting your best life. Alita quick and d- dirty tips? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have dirty tips? <laughs> that'll be that'll be a topic for another show. <laughs> but no, we'll get we'll get we'll get down and dirty here. Let's you know let's let's be real, okay? You know your listeners, uh, you know they tell it like it is. They're honest. They're vulnerable. They're open. Look, the first thing is you have to be willing to change. At a fundamental level, you have to be willing to give up some aspect of your identity and some aspect of what you think is comfortable, some aspect of what feels like instant gratification in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. Nothing you want is in your comfort zone. Nothing. Nothing. I got to repeat that. (laughs) I got to hear it again for myself. Nothing you want is in your comfort zone. So Food Heals Nation, you have to get out of your comfort zone to create something new. Right, Alita? Exactly. Exactly. I love that. I needed to hear that too. And, you know, the, the thing about it is, is this is what I also love about what Grant Cardone says is he said, you know, most of us fail because we set our goals too low and we actually achieve them. We get bored with life. Oh, wow. So that. if we are never setting big enough goals to challenge the boundaries of our comfort zone, to challenge the boundaries of our mind, we're bored. We sit around waiting to die every single day. We go, we get up, we do the same thing. We go to work. We do the same thing on the way home. All we can think about is getting home, having a glass of wine, putting our feet up and turning the TV on. So everything we do in our life is about numbing the fact that we are so bored and fed up with the melancholy life that we are living because we're not setting big enough goals. So we came here into this physical plane to expand, not to stay the same. We didn't come here to live life the way everybody else lived it. We came here to impact new realities and new creations into this life. So we've got to set really big goals so much that they challenge us and they inspire us every day to commit and take some sort of progressive action. One of my mentors, um, Pejman Gadimi, he was the founder. He's the founder of uh, secret entourage Academy. One of the founders, Mm -hmm. um, You know, he says, if all you do is make 1% progress every single day, when you get to the end of the year, that's 365% better you are. Love that. You know, and and we, we have this tendency to believe that when we're trying to create something that we have to, you know, yes, we have to play all in, but we can't expect to change everything all at once. We, we can't go from zero to hero, but What we can do when we start to calibrate ourselves to that new reality, we can practice excellence in everything that we do. So the second you wake up, be excellent in waking up. What can you do to be better at waking up? Oh, I, you, I could I could work on that. Be right? excellent at waking up. Be excellent at waking up. Be excellent at going to the toilet. Be excellent at taking I am a shower. Excellent at going to the be toilet, excellent at, 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 at being in conflict. Be excellent at reading a book or eating your food or washing your dishes. Be excellent at everything that you do. And if that if that and only that is your commitment, your life will change exponentially. I love that. But most of us are too busy pointing the finger at blame and wanting to blame somebody else for our suffering that we don't see that we're totally out of integrity with excellence. Can I put you on a stage somewhere? Like you are like a preacher, a teacher, like you are the whole package. Or, or maybe just in my pocket. So like, no, I was going to say we should, we should just record it. Yeah. And then have Alita-isms just to play. Like yeah. I need to hear about being excellent on the toilet. <laughs> How to be excellent on the toilet. <laughs> Look, I can't like I can't take credit for that. I actually learned that from one of my favorite uh, authors, Tick Not On. Mm. And in one of the books that that he wrote was um, on being mindfulness. And it literally talked about how to 
be present in every moment. So literally when you're sitting on the toilet, just giving thanks for the fact that your body can just eliminate, you know, what it needs to. And to have the process of being present in that space, we're usually like, oh, I just want to get in and get out. I don't want to even want to have to think about it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's literally just being in the presence and giving thanks. This is a part of our life. Mm -hmm. So how we approach and how we perceive and how we judge all of these experiences are either helping or hindering our ability to manifest something bigger and better. If we have any sort of self-judgment whatsoever, we're saying to God, source, the universe, I am unworthy. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that. If we want to manifest, we have to be worthy by choosing excellence in all that we do. And once we do that, it's easier and more graceful to reach our goals. I was just going to ask you this, like it's all coalescing for me. and And I was just thinking like self love. But it's, it's kind of the, it's all part of the same thing. It's almost like I picture a beautiful crystal and one side is self-love and the others will be excellent. The other side is be worthy. And it's just, it's all kind of one big, beautiful package. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you know, for instance, you are a, for, okay, so let's say you're a diamond. Okay. Would you put yourself in a closet? so that nobody could see you. Exactly. Right. You would want to show yourself off to the world. Look at how beautiful I shine. Let me shine my rainbow on you so that you can be a rainbow too. Let's be rainbows together. Right. (laughs) So, so why, why would we dim our light, you know, close the door on our sparkle when we can go and let that excellence be uh, the light that inspires us to take action. action. Right. We don't, (laughs) You know, it'll be great. I'll, I'll make sure you both get a copy and, um, it's, it's starting out in ebook form, but anybody who's on my email list will get first, um, information on that as well. Love it. Thank you so much, Alita. We'll have you back soon. Yay. Thank, thank you. you so much for having me. Thank Namaste. you, Alita. Always just enlightening to speak with you. Yeah. Always leave feeling better than when we started. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet to Kardashian immediately.